When it comes to cooking meals, drying clothes, heating water, and my home, nothing beats natural gas from Centerpoint Energy. It's my most affordable energy option. It costs less to use than electricity, propane, and heating oil. So if you already have natural gas, keep it. If you're replacing an appliance, choose it. Natural gas, your best choice. Safe and affordable, rest assured. For more on the benefits of a natural gas home, visit centerpointenergy.com slash natural gas benefits. Centerpoint Energy, always there. Last year was the first year of Midnight Maneuvers. Uh, so this year, I'm sure the guys were a little more exuberant about the process. How, how do you feel like they tolerated it? And then uh, how prepared do you feel like they are for spring? Um, I, no, I thought they got better each night. I thought, uh, you know, it, it was one, it's one of those deals where, uh, you know, you make it demanding and you want them to sprint uh, through the finish line. I, and I thought they did. I thought they got better each night. And... Uh, and I would have to say, um, you know, I don't try to put any limits on it, but uh, I'd have to say we were ahead of schedule on that. I, I, it went, I thought it would go good. It went, uh, I would say, a little better than I expected. Had it, with all the practices last year, been under preseason or in-season pressures, what's it like to get out there and practice in spring at a different pace, maybe a different instruction level? I think everybody's excited too. I think we very much need uh, need as much work as we can get as a team because we're still an extremely young team, and I think everybody's excited to be out there. We've uh, <clears throat> had a good off season up to this point, which I guess that's the first half of the off season, but uh, everybody's excited to be out there. We had a very well, I, I was pleased with it as a as a first practice. We had an enthusiastic, uh, high effort practice that uh, um, was sloppy. Uh, most of it, understandably, uh, so that it was sloppy. Um, <clears throat> some new guys out there and hadn't been out there for a while, but uh, I was pleased with the effort. Go ahead, John Sapphire. We got to see the roster today. Can you comment on the job that Coach Tyson Brown and his group have done over the winter getting these guys ready? I, Tyson and that group does a really good job, uh, you know, not just as far as uh, inside the weight room, but outside it as far as, uh, you know, kind of all the accountability things. And uh, and then in addition, um, he, he's, a, he's a guy that can um, create variety. You know, you have to do the same things over and over again to be any good there in the weight room, but to, he's good at creating variety with it uh, uh, keep it exciting and competitive. <clears throat> hey, Mike. How's it going? hope you've had a good uh, last couple of months. Uh, how would you kind of assess the competition at really all the positional groups? How kind of competitive has it been? And, and what like positional groups are you expecting <coughs> in those competition this spring? Well, I'll be able to tell you more as we get going and certainly as we put the pads on. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to think. Uh, well, there's going to be plenty of competition at the offensive line. Uh, there's going to be plenty of competition at receiver, and uh, <clears throat> not just the ones we have currently, but uh, we'll be excited to get the ones in in May. And uh, <clears throat> I think those guys will elevate the competition as we go down the road as well. Uh, the secondary, uh, definitely uh, some competition there, and I would say a few D-line slots. Not really a D-line overhaul, but uh, definitely some slots there. And what kind of was your communication like with Will these last uh, these last couple of months? How, how's he kind of doing based on, you know, you, you talking with him and what he's been up to? Well, he's doing a good job. He's, a, he, you know, he's one of those guys that's a, <clears throat> a self-starter when he works and, uh, you know, you trip over him in the film room all the time. Uh, so, I mean, that's a good quality. Then... Um, you know, and he's got to win his job too. Uh, that's what spring's all about. All the jobs are open, and then uh, uh, <clears throat> they fight it out. And you know, so we've uh, got some good quarterbacks on campus, and uh, they're teeing it up uh, right now. We repped, uh, shoot, I think. Uh, well, with the ones we repped three guys, and then uh, with the other group we repped, uh, you know, two more. So um, we repped five guys today. And the last one from me, you know, with vaccinations uh, being available for everyone, have you kind of encouraged your, your guys to, to go grab one when you can? Has that been something that's really been uh, discussed amongst uh, your team? 
They haven't had a lot of discussion on it. Um, you know, I think that uh, uh, actually I'm kind of waiting to hear myself, you know. Go ahead, Ben. Mike, in terms of quarterbacks, I mean, do you feel like it's right now between Will and Jack? And if so, you know, what are you kind of assessing when you look at a quarterback competition? And how, you, how do you feel like you're kind of going about it with those guys? Well, we, we, we're going to look at all of them. You know, we're going to look at all of them and try to see who separates themselves. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I would like to get it down to two. I don't know if I'll be able to do that. I uh, would like to get it down to two because uh, there's a point to where you've got to as they do separate themselves, channel uh, more reps into, you know, your better two guys. And uh, so, you know, we're right in the thick of it now as far as seeing who can do what because, you know, they're new faces. I haven't uh, coached a number of them. And so um, <clears throat> we'll see that. We got some good film today. I was encouraged by how they threw the ball. Uh, you know, several of them are, are doing a pretty good job as far as, I think, knowledge base uh, – <clears throat> offensively for a first day, you know, for a first day. Um, as we get uh, through the installation, we'll see on that. But, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's we're in the starting stages of uh, uh, teaching, uh, teaching as much as we can so they can put their skills out there on the field and then uh, trying to pare it down. So, um, <clears throat> yep, coach them up, teach them as much as you can. Uh, try to get their best effort uh, to the surface and then uh, sort out which best efforts you like the best. And just to clarify, I mean, in a perfect world, do you like, would you like to get, get down to two guys and then go from there heading into summer and fall? Uh, yes, I would, except for the thing is, is uh, uh, <clears throat> when we get to camp, we're going to do the same thing again, you know. So, um, <clears throat> you know, you want to give everybody uh, – as many resources as you can to compete, uh, but regardless uh, who we feel likes ahead in spring, we're gonna we're gonna do it again the first week of camp. Uh, uh, go out there and see what we have, and uh, same process. Steve, uh, Coach, how would you kind of assess uh, where the team is health-wise, and is there anybody that won't participate in spring practice? Um, I think we're healthy. Uh, I, I mean, just to try to go through, uh, you know, 90 guys. I, I, it seems to me we're healthy. Um, I can't think of anybody I felt like was missing, but I was trying to, uh, this being the first day, get to the right place and the right drill. Um, but uh, we're, he we're healthier than we have been. Uh, I would say this is the healthiest we've been since I've been here. Um, not participating in spring. Uh, can you think of anybody? No, we, we can't think of anybody. That doesn't mean there isn't anybody, but uh, if we think of it or, or you've got a, a name in mind or something, then we can address it. Mike, we saw the news that you hired Jay Hobson, former Southern Miss coach, earlier this week. How did that relationship come to be, and what do you think you can add to your staff, both from an on-the-field and off-the-field perspective? Uh, I've known of him for decades. I've gotten to know him uh, better and better as time's gone on. Uh, just a very sharp guy. Uh, <clears throat> knows Mississippi upside down and sideways, so I think that's very good. Um, <clears throat> but most importantly, just a good, solid coach, you know. Uh, his body of work, I think, is impressive, and – you know, anytime you have a guy uh, like that, it's a great resource to, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, pick, uh, uh, learn from what he knows. You know, and uh, you know, and obviously in those situations, not uh, not all of it complements what you're doing, but uh, just constantly testing your knowledge base and challenging your own ideas. I think that provides uh, a big resource. And then I also think that uh, an extra set of uh, experienced eyes on what we're doing is. Uh, is huge for us too. So we're very happy to have him. <clears throat> Joel? Last year, last year, Mike, we uh, heard you praise Errol Thompson a lot and, and Kobe Jones a lot for their leadership skills and uh, being vocal leaders of this team. I, I know one day of spring practice, you, probably, you may not be able to answer it, but just who are you kind of looking to to be those next guys that's kind of the heartbeat of this team and uh, just the vocal leaders that, that other guys can kind of turn to? 
Well, they're uh, emerging as we speak. Uh, they're 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 emerging as we speak. Um, uh, just as you were asking the question, um, uh, you know, uh, Will uh, came to mind. Uh, 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 Aaron Brule came to mind, and then uh, uh, Crumity's doing a lot of really good things right now. Um, then you got some guys that, by example, are, are I think impressive. Uh, uh, shoot, uh, Martin Emerson you know, comes to mind. Charles Cross, uh, <clears throat> uh, Cole Smith. Uh, oh, obviously, I'm leaving some guys out, but uh, uh, you know, but I, I, I do think we have a number of them um, that uh, you know they're just uh, good guys out there that. Uh, uh, whether it's by their own work ethic or by their general commitment to the program, um, you know, or, or, or just good examples. You know, I mean, if you're in the locker room next to them or you play next to them, I mean, it brings uh, more out of you, you know. And I, yeah, I mean, I'll just be walking through and overhear something. It'll inspire me too, you know, because, you, you know, you trudge around in the routine of your day and then all of a sudden you hear something or somebody's uh, – got a little extra enthusiasm. I mean, it, ins it, it, it inspires me too, you know. Ben? Mike, obviously Dave's a really experienced guy, and I know we've seen that analyst role kind of change a lot. Who did you say? Obviously, who's a very... Jay Hobson. Yeah. Obviously, we've seen that analyst role kind of change a lot in the last few years. I mean, just what do you kind of see that role as and, and being able to bring in sort of more experienced guys into that position? I guess the quickest way to answer that, <clears throat> and there's a lot of ways to answer it and, you know, more dimension to it. So, but I think, you know, just an extra set of eyes in the room, you know, an extra set of eyes in the room as you, <clears throat> as you watch film and do things that uh, you can bounce things off of. And then he can draw from his experience and, you know, nobody gets to have all the experience. That's why you, you gotta, you, you know, you gotta draw from others. I, I go, home and watch uh, documentaries on Netflix because I didn't get to be there, but I get to uh, draw from somebody else's experience and hopefully learn something in the process. David? <clears throat> Coach, since we haven't seen you and your staff working in spring before, how do you like to break up the spring between contact, non-contact, uh, kind of your time frame when you want to start separating guys or setting a depth chart? Well, I mean, you got to make some choices. Who, who are your three? But with that said, you, you know, you might have, uh, uh, say, uh, this guy or that guy up with the ones this day and then uh, rotate them down and bring the other guy up, you know, so, um, you know, because obviously the first unit's going to be the most cohesive one. And um, <clears throat> uh, so, you know, it, it kind of becomes a, a, a process of rotating guys up or down to see what they can do and then you know the guy that uh, does the best after several practices you keep him there and then uh, as far as the contact days uh, we do the non-contact days the first two days of spring the first two practices and then um, <clears throat> we do it uh, the practice before the spring game is how I've always done it and I've done it uh, pretty much that way every time so uh, and I don't know, maybe there's a better way to do it, but, uh, uh, but that's how I've always done it. Tyler. Mike, just another quick one on Hobson. Is he already on campus? Is he be, is he there watching spring practices and helping you guys out with that? Yeah, yes, he is. He's been here. Uh, I, well, he's been here for a week and then and then was out at practice today and, uh, and shoot, uh, uh, yeah, no, I mean, he's a sharp guy, knows what he's looking at, knows what he's doing. And, uh, and to be perfectly honest, uh, uh, you know, I feel like I get smarter just walking past him. So I'm going to walk back and forth past him several times next practice, but no, I mean, uh, it, no, he knows what he's doing and, and, uh, I think in the end it helps all of us. And then just to circle around back to what we were talking about at the very beginning about everyone being excited to be out there because this is an opportunity they didn't have last year. 
How much as a coaching staff have you guys just kind of drilled that into their heads, saying take advantage of this month because this is a month to get better that you guys didn't have last year and probably could have really used last year? Uh, some We did some of that, but then also try to make it clear that, you know, um, uh, you know, the, the balance between that, that it's, you know, it, it's exciting and a privilege to be out there and as cooped up as we've had these guys, you know, through, um, you know, uh, <clears throat> you know, this whole joyless COVID process, um, the, uh, you know, some of that uh, is, is kind of automatic, you know, I mean, we've, <laughs> of all springs, we've had to do less to motivate this spring, at least starting out than any of them. And then, uh, but then the other thing, uh, just because we're practicing, we're watching film, we're lifting weights, that that alone doesn't distinguish us. I mean, um, you know, because everybody's doing that. Whoever's the worst team in the country is watching film, lifting weights, and having practice. Uh, so if we want to distinguish ourselves and and have our, uh, you know, if if that's all you do, then all you are is everybody else. And so we have to be able to draw more out of our practices, our work, and our focus uh, through effort than uh, the guys down the road. Otherwise, that's who we are. We're everybody else. So we got to get more out of it.